In Michigan, utility companies are retiring greenhouse gas emitting coal plants in the fight against climate change. But humanity's appetite for more energy is only expected to grow as more electric vehicles hit the roads and emerging technologies require more power. Wind farms and solar fields aren't being built fast enough to offset those lost megawatts from coal. So at the crossroads of a climate crisis and an energy crisis, the future of clean energy in Michigan may be nuclear. Today, Michigan is going to make history. Palisade is going to make history. And it'll be the first restarted nuclear power plant in American history. In March, the federal government announced a one and a half billion dollar loan to an energy company attempting to restart the Palisades nuclear power plant. That's near South Haven on the shore of Lake Michigan. The Palisades plant was built in the 1970s and closed in 2022 to begin decommissioning. Once operational, Palisades will provide reliable power to more than 800,000 homes and help us meet our statewide clean energy goals by removing 3 million tons of CO2 from the atmosphere annually, roughly equal to the emissions of 650,000 cars. Michigan has passed a law setting a 100% clean energy standard by 2040. Many argue we can't get there without nuclear. Nuclear plants don't emit greenhouse gases or toxic pollutants, and they can operate 24-7, unlike wind and solar. If I have one nuclear reaction, I get a million times more energy than one burning of a coal lab. What that means is, to make a ton of electricity, I don't need much nuclear. Nuclear is also one of those rare issues that has support from Republicans and Democrats in Michigan. The state legislature recently launched a bipartisan nuclear caucus. There is a really interesting opportunity here for folks from all walks of life and backgrounds that get interested in energy for different reasons. Not only does nuclear power help with clean energy goals, it also contributes to domestic energy security and it creates high paying jobs. Let's use Palisades as an example. They employed, when they were operational, over 600 employees, many of which are union, supported about 1,100 local jobs. Michigan currently has two operational nuclear power plants, Fermi 2 on Lake Erie, which provides power to about 1 million customers, and DC Cook on Lake Michigan, which powers 2.18 million customers in Michigan and Indiana. A restarted Palisades plant would power 800,000 homes and businesses. Holtec International, the company that owns Palisades, also has future plans to build two 300 megawatt small modular reactors, or SMRs, on the site. An SMR is a new fission reactor design, and it's a fraction of the size of a traditional nuclear power plant. Maybe not every nuclear plant needs to be the gigantic electricity fuse mission. But there are some roadblocks on the path to a nuclear energy future in Michigan. For one thing, nuclear is not cheap. Building a new plant is expensive and it takes a long time. But a recent report from the Michigan Public Service Commission finds the cost of building a new plant could be offset by long-term economic impacts to communities, along with increased tax payments. Then there's public perception. That can also be a challenge. Nuclear energy brings up images of meltdowns or Homer Simpson in the control room. How many pieces do you win? I think people are afraid of what they don't know. Uh, and the unknown. I think the more education that we can do early on uh, in communities, regardless of the energy source or the new opportunities that may be coming to them, the better results we're going to get on deploying these at the scope and scale that are necessary. Nuclear energy is highly regulated with extensive security controls in place, but that doesn't mean people want it in their backyards or near the Great Lakes. Jody Flynn and her husband have owned a cottage near the Palisades plant for nearly 40 years they're especially concerned about the plans for new small modular reactors. We truly feel like we are just a guinea pig to try to start uh, a, new, a new trend that there's no proven history on. And you don't need to do this on Lake Michigan. This is a scary thing. Some environmental activists argue that nuclear energy creates different environmental and public safety risks in a horse trade for lower carbon emissions. And nuclear plants do generate radioactive waste that remains on site in perpetuity because, unlike other countries, the U.S. lacks a national repository. After it's cooled, spent fuel is stored in steel and concrete canisters next to the plant. From the design of the canister, I can argue it's you. Nuclear is perfectly, I can store nuclear waste perfectly safe. Right? 
thousand pictures on the internet of people hugging these canisters to prove that it's not a health risk. <laughs> the issue is the waste remains radioactive for thousands of years. So a 100-year canister is not a good long-term solution. Long-term, what we want to do is we want to put it in what's called a deep geological repository in far away. Unless a national repository is built, activists will remain concerned about storing nuclear waste so close to the Great Lakes. The civilization has reached the pinnacle of absurdity when we place the most dangerous chemical pollutant on the planet on the shores of the Great Lakes. 21% of the world's surface fresh water, all in jeopardy. Despite its drawbacks, nuclear energy is expected to be an important part of Michigan's clean energy future. Ultimately, we need to make sure that we have a diverse and robust portfolio of all different resources. So it needs to have wind, it needs to have storage, it needs to have you know, solar technology, but it also needs to have other baseload resources, whether that be nuclear or even natural gas with pollution control technologies like uh, carbon sequestration and capture. Many experts think small reactors, like those planned at Palisades, rather than huge nuclear power plants, are the future. And advancing nuclear technologies offer hope of lower costs and increased safety. So I cannot predict where all this will go, but if you look at the innovators in nuclear where people are trying to invent new things, there are a huge range of sizes and different functions. So it could be electricity, big electricity, could be small electricity, could be heat, could be a combination of both. Uh, it's just, it's a really interesting time. Even with the help of nuclear energy, the question remains whether Michigan and the world can transition away from fossil fuels fast enough to curb the most severe impacts of climate change.